Hello everyone, I hope you're keeping safe and well. Um, hopefully you can all see my screen too. Um, my camera isn't working, um, but as, as I said um, earlier to, um, to Alex and Sally, I've been getting up at 4.30 a.m. for the last six weeks, so it's probably best for everyone that it's not working, to be honest. Um, okay, the two resources that I'm going to talk to you about today are Bloomsbury Collections and Frama Online. Bloomsbury Collections um, is our main ebook platform. Um, as you can see, there is a, a vast list of subjects that are covered. In terms of the subject areas that would be most relevant to you and that you have access to, um, we have arts um, and visual culture and design and fashion. Um, so that will cover things from illustration, design, history and theory, um, fashion culture and history, fashion design, um, fashion marketing and promotion. Um, it would also cover history, so everything from early medieval history to contemporary history. Uh, we have collections on European and world history and empires um, and imperial and colonial history as well. So really vast collection set there. Um, for law ebooks, um, we have our Bloomsbury Professional Law Collection. And what this is, is a collection of practical legal interpretation and guidance texts. Um, the subject areas there um, predominantly are company and commercial law, family law, employment law and IP law. Um, and then the final two subject areas that you would have access to are linguistics. Um, so things like second language acquisition and applied linguistics, ELT and TESOL um, and philosophy of language. And then there's also a couple of literature collections, um, including the 18th to 19th century literature archive and a contemporary writing archive. Okay, so this is your main homepage. Um, a couple of different ways that you can search. The main one is just using the search box, um, whether it be for any kind of key terms, title or author. Um, you know, I don't need to run you through how to use a search box. Um, so we don't need to go into that in too much detail. Um, the one thing that I would implore everybody to do in the first instance would be to click on this My Collections button. Um, once you click on that, that's when you can register with your email and create a password. And the reason for doing this is that once you're logged in, you can then save various pieces of content. So when you click onto your um, collections page, as I've done here, it should come back in, sorry, buddy. So you click on my content and all of the work that you have saved will be in here. So going back to a basic search, so I've just searched for illustration here. Um, you've got a lot of uh, results here as well. Um, and you can then filter down by secondary subjects as well. Um, so again, you know, really vast, and really detailed. When you click into a text, I'll show you how it displays. So you can save the, the text as a whole or when you click into various chapters, you can you can save those as well. I'm sorry, I'm not sure why it's taking an age to load. There we go. So in here, your the words that you have searched for in your initial search would be highlighted here. Um, you can also search for other key terms and phrases uh, within the book. Uh, we have a, a referencing tool here. Um, so we've got APA, um, MLA and Chicago which is always useful. Um, you can email the link to yourself um, and you can print these to a PDF. So these can be saved at a chapter level. So when viewing a text, you can click each of these chapters here. These boxes that are filled here, the most relevant would, would appear first. So you know, relevant to the subject of illustration. And again, you can, say, you can save the individual chapters. And the other way to browse is by just clicking on this subject field as well when it decides to, um, to load. I'll blame my internet connection for that. And that's, to be honest, that is kind of it with Bloomsbury Collections. It's really straightforward. Um, it's, you know, it's not full of kind of image content and video databases and that kind of thing. It's just a very straightforward ebook databases across those subject areas that, that I've listed. Um, I do have title lists 
and handy that I can send to your librarian. So if you did need um, a specific title list, do just get in touch and we can send those um, send those over to you, no problem. The second resource is Drama Online. Um, so Drama Online is our is our huge drama uh, resource um, containing a number of play texts and scholarly ebooks. Um, that is the content that, that you have access to. So there's a number of different collections available, and the ones that you would have access to are our biggest collections. So it's the core collection, which has um, around 1,500 play texts um, from imprints such as the Arden Shakespeare, um, and includes texts from playwrights, both past and present. So obviously Shakespeare, Carol Churchill, Samuel Beckett. Um, Sophocles, and then a lot of contemporary writers as well. So um, Polly Stenham, DC Moore, um, some Lucy Pebble titles as well. Then you have access to the Nick Hearn books collection. Um, there's around 400 texts in that collection. Um, and that is from UK and Irish preeminent playwrights, um, as well as a load of exciting new voices as well. Um, and it offers a, a wide range of um, award-winning and widely studied plays and includes authors such as Jez Butterworth, uh, Mike Bartlett and uh, Ronan Munro. Um, and then the final collection that you have access to is a really interesting collection. It's the Critical Studies and Performance Practice. So these are academic ebooks um, offering critical and contextual um, work on theatre craft, theatre and performance studies. Um, some of the key titles there are the Guide to Contemporary Playwrights, um, we have a title called The Social and Political Theatre in 21st Century, um, and series such as Mastering Shakespeare as well. So that, that collection doesn't contain play text itself, it's much more on the kind of um, criticism and context of playwrights and themes. So Drama Online, again, you have the search box at the top here, um, you can browse by a variety of different ways. So you can either look at specific themes, genre, forms, or periods, um, or you can look at kind of plays, playwrights, um, theatre and context, theatre craft. Um, again, on here, you have a button up here to kind of register with your email address and password, which will allow you to save content. Uh, this actually also allows you to save searches, which is slightly different from Bluesbury Collections. And within that save search function, there's a um, ability to sign up email alerts when new content is added based on those keywords. So if you're interested in plays from Jez Butterworth, for example, you can set up to an email alert. So when new content is added to the platform, with um, whether it be a contextual ebook about Jez Butterworth and his works or um, some play text that are added, you would get a notification. I'll keep logging, please. I guess I'm going to have to do this always. Sorry. Right. On the advanced play search feature, um, you can search for things like number of scenes. Um, you can search for a monologue search as well, so um, based on word count. And what I've done here, I've just clicked into one of these first play text results here. I have the tab open. So this is how it would display. I've saved it here, so that would appear in my content up here. And on here, you have all on the left hand side, you have all the um, different tags. And once you click on these, it will take you through to related content um, also under those tags. Um, you know, so if you're interested in more fantasy plays and um, political play, plays, click on those and it'll bring you up a, a relevant list. Then we have a really useful play tools function, which I'm hoping is one of these tabs. Sorry, I think it's deciding to load again. Okay, so this is the Play Tools screen. Um, and this is really useful if you're looking to, get, looking to put together a production and, and you may only have a limited number of people available. Um, so for each act and scene, this dot here indicates the number of words that character has in that scene. So if you, if you do require one person to play multiple characters, you can make sure there's no crossover in between each scene. Um, and here we've got just the words and speech from each act and each scene. So really, really comprehensive, really, really useful tool. Again, please. And what I've done here on this page, so this is where I clicked into the fantasy tag, sorry. 
Um, and this is all the related content under the fantasy tag. Do you have image content as well? Um, and here, if you click on save this search, so this is where you save this in here. You can sign up for email alerts, and that's added. And then when you click up here into my content, you have my saved searches. And they appear in here. You can kind of switch on those, those notifications on and off. Um, if you save various play texts as well, um, they can, you can create these folders and move things around. So again, a really, really useful way to organize your work. And as with Bloomsbury Collections, there's the ability to print um, to a PDF as a chapter level. Um, there's a citation tool. Um, there's also a, a notes feature as well that you can use. Um, and that is everything for Drama Online. Um, hopefully my colleagues are also in the room. Um, and I could hand over to them. Lewis, um, we do have yep. one question about Bloomsbury yep. Collections. So is yep. there a way to refine your search from the start to only include material that we have access to? From the very start, at this stage there isn't, but once, so if you click on illustration, search that, there is a way of filtering. Um, frustratingly, it's not selected by default. Um, there's this access here. So if you clicked on purchase or open access, then all of these results that would display padlock icon would, would appear. So the, these will now all be open. So it is a, I know it is a feature that we are we are working on because ideally it would only show the content we have access to in the first instance. Um, but then at the same time, you know, it can be useful um, if there are specific texts that students are interested in um, accessing, it's useful for the, for the library to know. Uh, but that, that's the best way to, um, to filter that. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name's Fabio. I'm the uh, product manager for the Human Kinetics Library. Um, and this morning, I'm just going to take you through a brief demonstration of the platform, how it works, and how you can discover content on it. Uh, and any questions you might have, um, I'm happy to answer as well. Um, so just to give a bit of introduction, the Human Kinetics Library provides access to approximately 170 ebook titles from one of the world's leading publishers on sports and exercise studies. Uh, the collection includes textbooks, research monographs uh, and material for practitioners, which cover a, a wide variety of topics from um, kinesiology and exercise science to sports and facility management. Um, and are he heavily supplemented with user friendly charts and graphs, diagrams, illustrations, and even video demonstrations of uh, key topics and techniques. Um, the collection is fully text searchable, and every chapter has been tagged with key topics and sports to help you find the most relevant material for your studies. Um, so, this is the home page. And if you jump into the landing page for the Human Kinetics Library, which you can either do here or using the Browse Collections drop down menu. Uh, you can find more information about the range of uh, sports and topics covered uh, by the various titles, which are listed here, as well as a link to view all of the ebooks titles, uh, which are actually listed in the collection in case you have a particular volume that you would like to access in mind. However, if you're interested in doing a more general search for your materials uh, relevant to your particular study or research interest, there are numerous different ways in which you can explore and browse the collection. Um, so as I mentioned, the, the, the full collection is text searchable. So the main search bar, which appears at the top of every page, will allow you to interrogate the text of the resource for a particular term or phrase. Uh, so for instance, if I was interested in a topic like resistance training, um, I could type it in. Uh, I'll often get a suggested entry as well if it's something that appears in the in the, uh, the text body quite a lot. So typing in a topic like resistance training, uh, I get a full list of relevant uh, book chapters, um, and they're displayed at chapter level rather than ebook ebook level um, on this uh, view here. So these results are initially ordered in in terms of their relevance. So this favours chapters which whose titles contain the phrase itself, or chapters which have a high hit rate within the text. Um, but you could also order your search results alphabetically or in terms of publication dates. More, oops, sorry, uh, more information is uh, given about the book 
that the chapter belongs to in terms of the title, the author, the date of publication. Um, and there is a little preview as well of the relevant search term as it appears within the full text. Crucially, uh, you can also filter your search results according to a range of different sports and uh, topics against which every chapter has been tagged. So for instance, if I was interested in resistance training in relation to weightlifting, I could select that uh, filter option from the sidebar and then I'm presented with the chapter titles that have been specifically tagged against this and also contain the term that I am interested in. So show some examples here. So if I was to click into a specific chapter view, um, the first thing you'll notice is that your search, particular search term is highlighted within the text. So you'll also be able to scroll through every instance of where that term appears, allows you to jump through it there. There is also um, a table of contents for each chapter at the top of the page. So this allows you to jump to a particular section. And again, you can see your, your search terms here. So the text is rendered as fully searchable um, HTML, so you're able to do a full text search within each chapter. Uh, wherever there is a reference to another chapter or to a bibliographic reference or even to a, a sort of glossary term, the text will be marked up to allow you to click into it. Um, and diagrams, charts, graphs, anything to do with the, uh, the text is kind of rendered as a static image as well. If I jump back to the top of the chapter view page, um, there is also in the sidebar a list of the indexing terms against which each chapter has been tagged. So, for instance, the topics that are relevant to it and the sports and activities which are discussed within the chapter. These uh, indexing terms also drive the content sidebar view. So, um, the chapter view will kind of present to you similar chapters that you might be interested in based on the, the, the subjects of this particular. And you're also able to see chapters that you have previously viewed as well. So as I said, you're able to search for chapters individually, but then of course you have the option to go back to the ebook or the textbook or any um, uh, volume that the chapter belongs to, either by clicking on the uh, cover image or by going back into the breadcrumb. So here I now have the uh, the full list of chapters which uh, sit in this textbook. You get the uh, book summary and abstract, you get the full clickable table of contents, and you also have the option to perform a free text search specifically within a book. So if you've arrived at a book that you're interested in and you want to kind of interrogate its contents further, you could perform another free text search. So I'll put in another similar term like uh, agility training. And here you get a full list of all of the times that that term appears within the book, including a link to go to that particular chapter. And again, you see a similar view here. So scrolling down the page again, you'll notice the, um, the highly visual charts, diagrams, anything that's relevant to the text here, the ability to click to see full text references for any bibliographic data. And in the case of some books, um, there are accompanying video clips uh, which are sort of linked to within the book chapter. So in this case, there is a list of uh, kind of training drills that are talked about within the chapter. You have the option of going into um, one of these in particular. So if I take one at random, Clicking here takes you to the video view page and you're able to see a video demonstration of the particular activity that's discussed. If there is uh, text, if there's speech within the video, this will appear as a transcript at the bottom here. Those transcripts are fully text searchable. So if there's some text within the video uh, that is of particular importance, that will show up in your search results as well. And if you find yourself on a particular video page, then you can go back to the chapter view by following this link here. It takes you back to where you were. And again, you'll be able to see the other list of videos that are displayed with an icon here. 
once you've found a chapter or a piece of text or a video that you're particularly interested in, you also have the option to export the citation for that chapter if you want to export it. If you, sorry, if you want to cite it within an essay or a piece of research work, you're able to share it either via email or by social media. Um, and you're also able to save any searches or any uh, ebook chapters or anything of interest um, to a personal account. Once you're signed in through your institution, you have the option to create your own personal account on the site using your own email address. And there you'll be able to sort of save and share uh, ebook chapters, search terms, anything that you think you're going to want to come back to at a later date. So that's everything in terms of the content. And again, I'm happy to answer any questions about that. I'd also just point to some other helpful information you can find on the sites, which will be of interest. Um, so for instance, the about pages give more detail about the collection, the option to download a title list and see the full list of contents within the collection. Um, there's also information about human kinetics themselves, the editorial advisory board who've helped put this material together. Um, and we also have a long running program of featured content. Uh, every couple of months we update it with our editorial team uh, picking out kind of highlights from the collection around a particular subject or a particular sport. Um, and this is something that you can read up on and, and sort of, you know, make your way into the collection and find some more examples and any kind of previous featured content uh, we have here on the site as well. So, yeah, that's that's everything from me. I'll, I'll click back into the home page. Um, I wasn't sure. So did, did the questions follow each individual demo. I'm happy to field any now if they, if any come up. Yes, we have had a few questions, Fabio, if that's OK. No problem um, at all. The first one is how often are new additions added to the collection? So the collection is updated annually um, and we have a kind of full, like a, a sort of forward plan with uh, Human Kinetics, our publisher partner, to update the collections once a year. The collection itself has actually just been updated with 16 new titles. Um, and that includes uh, the most recent editions of some of those volumes. Um, that will be messaged on the on the platform and also through the kind of uh, communications we have. Um, but yes, annually is, is the answer to that. Thank you. And the second one is, um, are we restricted in terms of printing and copying? And when does um, this, when, when, when you print um, items out, does this include diagrams and images as other ebook providers don't often enable you to print these? Uh, any content, yes, that's included within the chapter should be fine to include in the print view. Um, if I go back to, if I go back to uh, the chapter that I've just been on, you do have the option to print content. And if it shows a preview here, it should include everything that is included within the chapter itself. Sorry, this is my internet being a little bit slow. Um, but yes, you'll be able to see. Oh, there we go. Yes, you'll be able to see this for yourself in the in the print view when you get to it. Thank you. And are there any restrictions um, in terms of how much we can um, print and copy? Uh, the, the the site automatically uh, kind of stops mass downloading just because we that's something we restrict on the site. But generally speaking, it's it's not something that's restricted to a particular account. Perfect. Thank you. Okay, so um, just to give a bit of an overview of um, Bloomsbury Education and Childhood Studies as a resource um, and sort of the aims of the resource. Um, so Bloomsbury Education and Childhood Studies, or, or BEX as I'll kind of refer to it, um, just for ease going forward, is um, well, it aims to be the definitive resource um, of authoritative information about the state of education systems as well as the nature of childhood and youth experience around the world. Um, so to sort of to highlight this, we've split um, Bloomsbury Education and Childhood Studies um, up into um, three sort of key sections um, through which you can compare and contrast um, education levels, topics um, and countries. Um, so and you can sort of see these as displayed sort of in the home page here. Um, so just to kind of run you through the home page, um, the home page is designed to um, sorry, I'm just getting a few pop ups. Um, the home page is designed to um, 
improve discoverability um, for students so they can find pathways into the content. So the ways in which we do that, we have a kind of key hero image here, um, which um, links to regularly updated feature content, which, um, as I think Fabio has mentioned in his previous um, demonst uh, demonstration, um, feature content sort of highlights key topics, articles and countries um, and show how and shows how the content can be compared across taxonomy, taxonomy fields and content types. So if I just click into this quickly, I can give you a sort of overview. So this changes regularly. So our featured content changes, um, the featured theme will change regularly. And then also we have an article spotlight, which shows how the article content within the resource can be compared um, across countries um, and across topics. Um, the home page also features um, our interactive world map, which if I click into it, um, you can sort of see a real breakdown of the breadth of the geographical scope within BEX. Um, so if I just click on one of these content, um, uh, continents, um, you can sort of see um, the breakdown by region within the continent. And then if you click on, say, Egypt, for example, it will take you through to um, our sort of standard search result, taxonomy result um, landing page here. Um, so I'm going to sort of take you through that in a bit more detail in a second, but I will just return to the homepage really quickly to give you a sort of full overview of the homepage. So we also have um, our the sort of the links to the other sections of the feature content, so the article spotlight, the topic in focus, and we also have a recently added section, which um, again is regularly regularly updated to um, highlight recently added key texts um, that have sort of um, been recently put onto Bex. Um, so with Bex, to sort of give a bit of an overview also of um, the content types uh, or the sort of the types of content that we um, house within the resource. Um, if I do a search for, for example, um, secondary education curriculum, um, this will take you through again to this sort of search results page that um, you would have seen earlier. Um, and this lists um, your sort of search results out um, by the three main sections that I mentioned previously. So education level, place and topic here. Um, I think what's nice about this sort of filtering feature is that it shows you sort of the, um, the amount of um, sort of content that your search has your search result has returned so it shows you sort of like the popular sections um, if you're looking for a sort of a particular uh, topic to um, look into further or if you're writing an essay on um, a particular country but you haven't decided which one you can see that um, we have a lot of content in uh, Finland for example so you might want to do a comparative um, sort of study of um, education systems in Finland. So if you click on any of these um, filtering sort of uh, terminology uh, terminologies, um, that will sort of refine your search further. Um, and just to sort of take you through the types of content we have within the resource, if I just, I'm just gonna, um, so the filtering results also um, show uh, the content types that we have on the resource as well. So you can um, filter by the type of um, material that you're looking for if, if that's useful. Um, so we have um, book chapters. So Bex houses a wealth of um, ebook material. Um, we, have, we also have um, the Education Around the World series, which is 18 volumes covering every single country around the world. Um, we have country overview pages, which give an overview um, of each of the different countries that we have within the resource. Um, and by the time that BEX is complete, um, we will have a country overview for every single um, country within the resource. 
we have um, education level overviews which act in the same sort of vein as a country overviews in the sense that they give an overview to um, the this sort of um, this section of education levels we also have policy reports um, that we've licensed from the World Bank which are a collection of over 60 policy and case study orientated research reports from um, the World Bank Open Knowledge Repository and I'll go into each of this um, each of these content types um, in more detail shortly um, at the heart of Bex also just to highlight um, the real sort of um, sort of special content is um, the article content um, so these articles are all specially commissioned and exclusive to the resource. Um, each article goes through a dual peer review process um, to be included within the resource. And um, each article, if I just um, demonstrate, I might just... Um, so each article is um, templated by subheading, making it simple to directly compare um, across countries. Um, so if a user um, were to be studying um, curriculum in secondary education, then each of these um, headings within the table of contents um, will be exactly the same. Um, and this just adds to the sort of the comparative nature of the resource. Um, so as you can see here, the table of contents is is exactly the same. Um, this is also a sort of, I suppose you could call it a, a sort of a growing live encyclopedia. So every year or twice a year, we include um, more articles on existing and new countries. Um, and at the moment, we have um, over 500 articles within the resource. Um, on a number of different topics and um, country overviews and country, well, sorry, and countries. Um, so, if I just um, sort of give a demonstration of the sort of the functionality of these um, articles. Um, so, the author appears at the top, and you can um, click on the, their name to see their affiliation and um, their biography. Um, each article has a regional editor and um, an editor in chief, or a selection of editor in chiefs in this case. Um, as I said, the table of contents is um, is templated. Um, we also have links to the bibliography, as you can see here. And then the option to go back to the top of the page. Um, each article also has um, a glossary. So you can click on um, highlighted terms, um, which will give you a sort of um, a more technical overview of um, sort of specialist uh, terminology. So um, I'm also just going to give you um, an overview of um, the uh, explore by that we have in our top navigation. So another way to discover three, the three sort of key sections within the resource um, is to click on this um, explore by button in the top navigation. So um, if I click on education level, and then you can see here each of the six education levels highlighted here. So um, the sort of the idea is that we have the three main sort of um, education levels in early childhood, primary education, and secondary education, and then we have three de developmental levels: so youth, childhood, and higher education. So if I were to click on higher education, um, and then say filter by uh, let's say education level overview that will take you to um, there we go the educate the education level overview for higher education so if we were to click on that um, I can give you an overview I can well, give you an overview of um, this education level page 
So again, each of the um, education levels are templated. Um, they have an overview. They also show you the key topics that are found um, within um, each of the education levels. Um, and again, these are um, these appear across all of the um, articles featured within BEX. Um, then, um, yeah, so these are effectively sort of landing pages for the education level. Um, so we also include information on the editor in chief uh, for higher education and the uh, and if there is a co-editor, they'll also be there. Um, so um, now I am going to go back to let's say explore by place so if you were to explore by um, the geographical region you'll be uh, taken to this um, sort of taxonomy page for um, the uh, sort of all of the regions that we have um, within BEX and they're uh, separated by continent um, all of these are collapsible for ease um, so um, if I were to say click into Finland which you can see is quite populous and then if I were to filter by the education around the world um, chapter we can go into the specific chapter that relates to Finland that is within the education around the world um, series so um, the sort of the standard functionality for ebooks um, is kind of it's similar across platforms so I think Fabio would have already sort of shown you um, how these sort of work but just to kind of take you to the sort of the top level um, book landing page if you like this is sort of one um, ebook um, entry um, you have the sort of standard metadata again the um, author's uh, affiliation is pre like present um, in the sort of the pop-up there's a book summary and an abstract um, and then you have your full table of contents um, so if we just go back into the Finland chapter um, each chapter has their own sort of table of contents if you like or um, just a list of, of headings really that help you navigate the chapter um, with ease you can also um, choose to search within the book um, if we were to just search for something very basic like education except there's no results for education um, but if you were to search for something um, it would appear within the search results um, so I don't know what um, yes and each um, chapter is um, sort of each chapter has um, a number of different sort of um, uh, bits of terminology associated with that chapter um, and uh, which helps you sort of find um, similar content um, and your and the results within the resource are kind of driven by um, the this, this indexing if you like um, so you can click on any of these topics and it will take you through to um, uh, relevant material um, to find other relevant material you can also um, see the related content section which appears below um, the subjects box um, and this will take you through to um, so relevant content um, so um, a lot of the material provides um, sort of um, images and um, uh, uh, tables um, that are linked to within the text um, so they're easily navigable so you can click on any of these links and it will take you through to um, you know the the figures and the tables here um, so um, if I now show you um, the policy report so another way to browse content um, is in the browse content box at the top of the site um, in the, the sort of the global navigation bar so um, if we click into the policy report 
So we have 62 reports from the World Bank. All of this is public domain content, um, but you can sort of uh, see the breadth of the content we have here. Um, if I were to click on a, one of them, we present the material um, uh, in a sort of a similar way in the sense that we'll have um, the sort of the, the main book page and then the table of contents. But as you can see here, we have we present the material the PDF viewer um, rather than um, the sort of uh, our standard sort of ebook functionality. Um, and um, each and the the chapters are linked to in the sidebar here. Um, there's also um, a section for the table of contents um, just to improve the kind of the navigability within the um, the PDF. Um, and the PDF is also searchable. As you can see here. Um, I think um, that is everything from a content perspective. Um, also, just to sort of um, highlight that um, within the resource, um, we have a sort of a wealth of information um, for sort of uh, new users. So we have like an overview video, um, links to sort of key highlights, um, as well as the featured content, as mentioned, and then the featured content archive. Um, so you can see all of the past um, sort of themes and countries that we've highlighted here. And this is just a really nice way um, to sort of see how the material within the resource can be compared um, at a thematic level, at a topic level um, and sort of by, um, by country as well.